What is up, folks? It is Jafer now as a certified clown of MMOs and every possible mechanic I know that I get tricked into playing with them. I absolutely love them. And so I was super excited to see that SteelSeries released the Aerox 9, their new MOBA MMO mouse with a bunch of buttons on the side because you definitely need that for a game that has a ton of abilities. Now, unfortunately, the mouse scene has been leaving this space, the MOBA and MMO part of it, kind of dormant. A lot of the trends just have not caught on to it. Let's take a look and see if SteelSeries' latest trends and specs makes up for a pretty stagnant section of the mouse scene. Releasing at a pretty shocking price of $149.99, SteelSeries is offering something different than the Logitech G600, Razer Naga, or the Corsair Scimitar. At 89 grams, this is the lightest offering in the same class of the others. We have 18 buttons on this compared to the usual five. There's 12 on the side and even tilt wheel functioning. Those added buttons and switches make up the weight as the body is extremely cut out from top to bottom. Available only in black currently, it's made up of your ABS plastic body that has a nice texture to it where your fingers will rest. Thankfully, there are no no cutouts on the side, so it's not going to be of any uncomfortable positioning for that ring or pinky finger. Although I really do wish SteelSeries would stop with Swiss cheesing the triggers of mouse one and two, as it is really uncomfortable if for whatever reason you need to change your grip. Next thing you know, you're clicking on holes. There are comfort grooves in the triggers though, so once you find your placement, it's pretty cozy if you don't move your fingers. There is RGB with a piece of plastic diffusing the lighting across its bottom. It's customizable in the software. Honestly, nothing too exciting about this. It is kind of part for the course for the Aerox family with a hand size of 19 by 10 centimeters and the mouse's dimensions of 128 long 42 millimeters high and 63 millimeters at that grip I kind of felt like a palm grip was my only option with this Aerox 9 mouse now I do think a relaxed claw can work uh, but you might want to have bigger hands as it just didn't feel completely natural to me I had to kind of force that relaxed claw grip as opposed to the palm just coming natural. Fingertip grippers need not apply here when it comes to an MMO mouse as the actuation force on the side buttons just don't work with that free light handed style of your fingertip grip. The scroll wheel has nice defined tactile steps with smoothness on the clicks. Definitely a fan of this one. I do wish the wheel was higher off the body though. It sits very low, so it's hard to initiate that tilt button on the left or right, like maybe one to two millimeters higher off the body, and my finger could definitely catch on to the side of the wheel to initiate those buttons. Unfortunately, my finger just kind of slips right over top of it. Mouse one and two have the golden micro IP54 switches. They're good for over 80 million clicks. They're super light and crispy switches. Perfect for all your spamming needs, especially with an MMO. So on the left side, it's the most important thing. You have 12 buttons that stretch across and they're gonna be in a gunmetal color with white legends. Again, no RGB here to distinct them. You do have to try to kind of feel them out and there is only one homing key and that's gonna be the number five, similar to the J or F key on your keyboard. What I enjoyed about the Razer Naga, and that's the one I've made for years, is just how comfortable it is to use. The buttons are somewhat rounded and tapered off, whereas the Aerox buttons are really sharp and just boxy. You know, you're playing an MMO for hours a day. It's not one or two games like a first person shooter. You're doing a lot of farming for hours and then you gotta get ready for raid night. I mean, it's kind of like a second job sometimes with MMOs. So you are definitely using this mouse for a lengthy period of time. The Nagas are also clicky with a really low actuation force, whereas Aerox's buttons are really firm and they definitely require more force to actuate. I feel like my thumb has gained muscle mass just from using this for a week now. The buttons are also angled so that the number three is definitely sitting much further than it needs to be from my thumb. The Nagas are strictly vertical, reducing any added fatigue on your grip because you're not having to change your grip or really stretch anything out. And I'm not asking for the Aerox 9 to be a clone of the tried and true Naga, but there's a reason why Razer has released the Naga in different iterations 
for over a decade now. It is just a proven mouse and they take subtle changes with every new iteration. Nothing drastic because they definitely don't want to ruin the formula. So I'd like to see SteelSeries make these buttons a tad softer to press and consider them not so far out of reach with just trying to use it. Underneath are 100% PTFE feet, nice rounded and only two that I believe share the same dimension as the other Aerox version. So we should see third party options readily available soon, if not already. The build quality on the Aerox 9 is hit and miss. Now on the shell itself, the full body experience, now there is no flexing, there's no popping, anything like that. It is a super sturdy mouse. However, once we get into the trigger side of things, well, that's where there is some minimal side wobble. There's no pre-travel, but pretty noticeable post-travel that has some plastic binding when you have some added force that's applied. It does make clicks feel rather cheap, to be honest. You have your on off switch with an available 2.4 gigahertz signal, as well as Bluetooth 5.0. Now it's 80 hours of wireless battery life and then 180 hours if you're on Bluetooth. Another silly marketing tactic used by these companies to imply your gaming time is gonna be longer than it is. I do wish these companies would stop marketing the battery life on the Bluetooth because no one that's buying this and it's gonna be a gamer is going to be using this in a Bluetooth signal. They're gonna be using it in the better, stronger signal of your wireless 2.4 gigahertz. The SteelSeries engine, their software is okay. It's a lot of unwanted crap and advertisements, but you can get some basic adjustments here and there. That's pretty par for the course. And here you can also get a layout of the side buttons and you can change those key bindings. What's not in the software is lift off distance adjustments with the True Move Air sensor that SteelSeries has as their proprietary offering. I'm still rather baffled as SteelSeries does not seem to want to address this with their air sensor. It's constantly mentioned as SteelSeries continues to release new mice. So in use, the Aerox 9 actually took me a while to get used to, surprisingly. I was already kind of familiar with the shape, but it just feels like a whole new ball game when you include all those buttons that you're gonna be using. As other MMO mice out there that have really kind of always existed, they're really kind of chunky, wide, thick boys. And this is the first, like, I would say narrow MMO mouse that I've seen or used. So I'm hoping and praying Logitech and Razer revamp their respective options in a lightweight form soon, especially with the likes of Lost Ark that just blew up and Warcraft still beating its drum with other MMOs on the way. So while finally being able to use a premium MMO mouse under 90 grams seems really enticing, I unfortunately cannot recommend the SteelSeries Aerox 9. At its steep price of $150, we're missing a charging stand. We have some okay side buttons that really don't feel all that premium. We have tilt function on the scroll wheel that is near impossible to use. We have subpar software that's missing basic sensor adjustments these days. And there is some questionable build in mouse one and two. So I would wait, if you have your heart set on the Aerox 9, wait until it's on sale. And don't get me wrong, while I did list a lot of complaints, if SteelSeries can address at least half of these, then this mouse would be a banger because I love the shape of it and I love the weight. It is a good mouse if they can address these issues, but right now at $150, that's a no-go for me. If you think differently, if you disagree, leave a comment below. If you like the video, throw a like. And of course, if you like the content, I would greatly appreciate a subscription. Until next time, I am Jafer. Stay safe.